You're listening to the Republic Broadcasting Network. Because you can handle the truth. Madam Speaker, I have a few questions for my colleagues. What if our foreign policy of the past century is deeply flawed and has not served our national security interests? What if we wake up one day and realize that the terrorist threat is a predictable consequence of our meddling in the affairs of others and has nothing to do with us being free and prosperous? What if propping up repressive regimes in the Middle East endangers both the United States and Israel? What if occupying countries like Iraq and Afghanistan and bombing Pakistan is directly related to the hatred directed toward us? What if someday it dawns on us that losing over 5,000 American military personnel in the Middle East since 9-11 is not a fair trade-off for the loss of nearly 3,000 American citizens, no matter how many Iraqi, Pakistani, and Afghan people are killed or displaced? What if we finally decide that torture, even if called enhanced interrogation technique, is self-destructive and produces no useful information and that contracting it out to a third world nation is just as evil? What if it is finally realized that war and military spending is always destructive to the economy? What if all wartime spending is paid for through the deceitful and evil process of inflating and borrowing? What if we finally see that wartime conditions always undermine personal liberty? What if conservatives who preach small government wake up and realize that our interventionist foreign policy provides the greatest incentive to expand the government? What if conservatives understood once again that their only logical position is to reject military intervention and managing an empire throughout the world? What if the American people woke up and understood that the official reasons for going to war are almost always based on lies and promoted by war propaganda in order to serve special interests? What if we as a nation came to realize that the quest for empire eventually destroys all great nations? What if Obama has no intention of leaving Iraq? What if a military draft is being planned for for the wars that will spread out if our foreign policy is not changed? What if the American people learn the truth? That our foreign policy has nothing to do with national security. That it never changes from one administration to the next. What if war in preparation for war is a racket serving the special interests? What if President Obama is completely wrong about Afghanistan and turns out worse than Iraq and Vietnam put together? What if Christianity actually teaches peace and not preventive wars of aggression? What if diplomacy is found to be superior to bombs and bribes in protecting America? What happens if my concerns are completely unfounded? Nothing. But what happens if my concerns are justified and ignored? Nothing good. And I yield back the balance of my time. Welcome to Resurrection Republic Truth Radio Broadcast on the Republic Broadcasting Network. I'm your host, Tom Lacavara Stewart. Now, you know, we've gone back and forth on the Trump administration and former administrations for their war policy. Um, I will always be a pro peace paleo conservative, I believe, at my roots. I, I just, uh, I'm not for these wars. And it makes for very interesting bedfellows on the radio and and on uh out in the alternative media um you know we've been playing uh, uh some very agreeable content from uh folks that have been like jimmy Dore, who's been attacked for his position uh on just exposing the truth and you know little glimmers of truth come from the mainstream media uh at different times but what I think is, is most important, I really do, um, is that we need to listen and be educated as to uh, the positions that we're taking. Now, how can we do that? Well, everybody, I, I've talked to a lot of people who have spoken about Assad, and they've developed opinions 
on Assad. Well, okay, and that's fair enough. Um, but you also have to understand that without listening, uh, without first listening to what he has to say, you know, that would be like uh, trying to uh, say that you know what the president was thinking, what he was doing, without ever listening to a word he said or anything he did. So, uh, Lori Anderson and I have been wanting to share with you for some time um, the raw interviews, uh, unedited, uh, of Assad. Uh, there's a lot of folks out there that, that haven't had the chance to listen to it yet. Uh, there's a lot of folks out there that listen that listen by phone. They don't have internet and computers, and uh, who knows about shortwave and other uh, other communications mediums out there. So I want to bring you what the man has to say. Now, keep in mind, um, I suppose this is my disclaimer. Um, I don't really have um, such a steady opinion on Assad to say that I support or don't support. As far as I'm concerned. What goes on in the republic is, uh, and and any threats to uh, those boundaries are what I need to be focusing on, and that's what the Constitution pretty much limits the federal government to doing. Um, so, you know, many say he is a wise man, uh, and that he has uh, pro-Christian tendencies. Uh, I, I do know that he does protect Christians from what I have been told from people that I know from Syria. Uh, I've spoken with folks that have come out of Iraq after the, um, you know, the original Gulf War and, uh, and then the next one. Um, I've spoken with them at length on what their opinion is about American foreign policy. And he said, well, to be quite honest with you, and this is under Saddam Hussein, um, he doesn't want to go on the record. I wanted to do a recorded interview, but he didn't feel uh, comfortable doing so. So I have to respect him for that, right? Um, and, but he told me that as much as he loves the United States, and this is what I like about this guy, he does love the United States. Uh, he's concerned about what he sees going on here, uh, knowing the history now. Um, but what he said was like Saddam or hate Saddam, when Saddam was in power, you didn't have terrorists running amok and see, so Um, To meddle in the affairs of foreign nations, to arm people. I remember back, remember that guy uh, from the Free Syrian Army or whatever it was that cut the heart out of one of his uh, opponents and took a bite out of it? I mean, the arming of these people is just insane. So anyway, uh, I I really want you to hear, if you haven't heard, uh, this interview. Now, keep in mind, we are, uh, I did fix the Chitango uh, the Chatango chat for those of you that want to comment during this presentation because this is going to be a little bit lengthy but I think that it's important that you hear it you can go to resurrectrepublic.chatango.com I have it up on one of my screens and I will be uh, able to communicate with you during the show unless you want to call in which uh, of course uh, let the interview go for a little bit uh, and hear what you have to hear. And if you want to call in with a comment, please feel free to do that. 1-800-313-9443. Um, also, um, I was speaking with John Statmiller earlier today, and we're talking about possibly doing a time shift to uh, a different during the daytime hours. Uh, that would be 11 o'clock Pacific time, I think, or is it no one? Oh, I'd have to figure that out. Anyway, uh, so anyway, folks, we may be shifting to the day slot. For those of you out there that have been listening, know that there was a there's an there's a, a spot empty, um, and you know uh, I can't really comment on that really because I don't know too much about it. I'm out here in Oregon trying to to mind my uh, you know like like my mother told me keep my head down and keep my powder dry. So it would be uh, a trial thing because uh, we are going to. Uh, possibly be relocating to Arizona. I don't know if the time slot's going to work out in Arizona, but um, of course we'll do everything we can to support the network and keep things going. And um, so I want you to to, to really uh, keep an eye out on the show in the next couple days, and and feel free to send me emails at rtrtruthmedia at gmail dot com if you should have any questions, and I will update anybody who who sends me an email and and let them know what's going on when it's going on. 
Um, so that's what I have to say with that. Well, also part of the uh, hesitance is that Lori Anderson would have a very difficult time during that daytime slot. So we're trying to coordinate a way that she can do uh, reports and we can still move to that time slot. So we're still working that out, folks. Just be patient with us. Uh, be patient with the Republic Broadcasting Network. We'll get all this ironed out as soon as humanly possible. I promise you that. Uh, okay, so anyway, uh, I've rattled on enough. Uh, you can go to resurrectrepublic.com. On the right-hand side, scroll down, you'll see the chat menu, or you can go to resurrectrepublic.chattango.com. Uh, you can go either way. Uh, it will uh, it will work. Um, upcoming in the week, we're going to be covering any, everything from chemtrails to political prisoners to what's going on out in the West, and as well as what's going on in the Northeast. My goodness, there's some things going on out there that's just insane. So anyway, uh, let's get to this interview with Assad. This first uh, interview is, is a foreign interview. The second one is, I believe, NBC. Uh, that was recorded at his um, uh, recorded by his staff unedited. So there there are no clips, there are no excerpts, there's no um, uh, funny editing. It's it's a straight uh, forward uh, interview. At least we can confirm for the second one. The first one looks pretty uh, uh, good as well. So anyway, Mike, go ahead and roll the Assad interview number one. Mr. President, first I want to thank you very much to receive me for an interview. Mr. President, did you give an order to strike Han Shekhun with chemical weapon last Tuesday? Actually, uh, no one has investigated what happened that day in Han uh, Shekhun till that moment. Uh, as you know, Han Shekhun is under the control of uh, Al-Nusra Front, which is a branch of Al-Qaeda. So the only information the world uh, have had till this moment is uh, by, uh, published by Al-Qaeda branch. Uh, no one has any other information. We don't know if the whole pictures uh, or video that we've been seeing are true or fabricated. That's why we asked for uh, investigation to what happened in Khan Sheikhoun. This is the second Al-Qaeda sources say that the attack happened at 6, 6.30 in the morning, while the Syrian attack in the same area was at an, uh, around noon, between 11.30 to 12. So it's, uh, they're talking about two different uh, stories or uh, events. So there was no order to uh, make any attack. We don't have any chemical weapons. We gave up our arsenals a few years ago. Even if we have them, we wouldn't use them. And we have never used our uh, chemical uh, arsenal uh, in our history. So what happened this day? As I said, the only source is Al-Qaeda. We cannot... Uh, take it seriously, but our impression that the West, mainly the United States, is hand in glove with the terrorists. They fabricated the whole story in order to have a pretext for the attack. It wasn't attack because of what happened in Khan Sheikhoun. It's one event, it's a stage one, the play that we saw on the social networking and on TVs, uh, the propaganda, and the stage two is the military uh, attack. That's what we believe is happening because it's only few uh, few days, two days, 48 hours between uh, the play and the attacks, and no investigations, uh, no uh, concrete evidence about everything, anything. The only thing were allegations and propaganda, and then strike. So, who, according to you, is responsible about this allegation? A chemical attack. The allegation itself by Al Qaeda, Al Nusra Front. So we don't have to investigate who they announced it. It's under their control. No one else. Uh, about the attack, as I said, it's not clear whether it happened or not. Because how can you verify a video? You have a lot of fake videos now, and you have the proof that those videos were fake, like the white helmets, for example. They are Al Qaeda. They are Al Nusra Front, who shaved their beard, wore white hats, and appeared as humanitarian uh, heroes, which is not the case. The same people were killing Syrian soldiers, and you have the proof on, on the internet uh, anyway. So the same thing for that chemical attack. We don't know whether those dead children, were they killed in Khan Sheikhoun, were they dead at all? Uh, uh, who committed the attack if there was attack? What the material, you have no information at all, nothing at all, no one investigated. 
So you think it's a fabrication? Uh, definitely. A hundred percent for us it's fabrication. We don't have arsenal. We're not going to use it. And you have many indications if you don't have proof because no one has concrete ev uh, information or evidences. But you have indications. For example, uh, less than two weeks, around ten days before that attack, uh, the terrorists were advancing in many fronts, including the suburbs of Damascus and Hama, which is not far from Khan Sheikhoun. Uh, let's suppose we have this arsenal and let's suppose that we have the will to use it. Why didn't we use it when we were retreating and the terrorists were advancing? Actually, the timing of that attack or alleged attack was when the Syrian army was advancing very fast and actually the terrorists were collapsing. So why to use it if you have it and if you have the will? Why to use it at that timing, not when you are in a difficult situation? Logically. This is first. Second, if you want to use it, if you have it and if you want to use it, again, this is, if we suppose, uh, why to use it against civilians, not to use it against the terrorists that we are fighting? Uh, third, uh, in that area, we don't have army, we don't have battles, uh, we don't have any, 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 let's say, object in Khan Sheikhoun, and it's not strategic area. Why to attack it? Well, what, what the reason? Militarily, I'm talking about military, from, from a military point of view. Of course, the foundation for us morally, we wouldn't do it if we have it. We wouldn't have the will because morally this is not acceptable. We, we, we won't have this, uh, the support of the public. So every indication is against the whole story. So we can say that this play that they staged doesn't hold together. The story is not convincing by any means. With the U.S. airstrike, Trump seems to have changed his position on you and CIA drastically. You have the feeling that you lost what you call, have called a potential partner. I said if it was conditional. Yeah. <laughs> if they are serious in fighting terrorists, we're going to be partner. And I said not only the United States, whoever wants to fight the terrorists, we are partner. This is uh, basic, uh, basic for us, basic principle, let's say. Uh, actually, what has been proven recently, as I said earlier, that they are hand in gloves with those terrorists. The United States and the West, they are not serious in fighting the terrorists. And yesterday, some of their statements were defending ISIS. They were saying that ISIS doesn't have chemical weapons. They are defending ISIS against the Syrian government and the Syrian army. Uh, so, actually, you cannot talk about partnership between us who work against the terrorists and who fight the terrorism and the others who are supporting explicitly the terrorists. So, can we say that uh, the U.S. tried to change your opinion on uh, Trump? Uh, anyway, uh, I was very cautious in saying any opinion regarding him before, uh, or before he became president and after. I always say, let's see what... Uh, what he's going to, what's he, what he's going to do. Uh, we wouldn't comment on uh, statements. Uh, so actually, this is the first proof that it's not about the president in the United States. It's about the regime. And the deep state or the deep regime in the United States is still the same. It doesn't change. Uh, the president is only one of the performers on their theater. It's not really, if he wants to be a leader, he cannot because as some say, he wanted to be a leader, Trump wanted to be a leader, but every president there, if he wants to be a real leader, he later is going to eat his words, swallow his pride, if he has pride at all, and make 180 degree U-turn, otherwise he will pay the price politically. But do you think that it will be another attack? As long as the United States being governed by this complex of military industrial complex and uh, uh, the financial uh, uh, companies, uh, banks, uh, and this uh, uh, what you call deep regime and uh, work for the vested interests of those uh, groups, of course, it could happen anytime, anywhere, not only in Syria. And your army or the Russian will, will retaliate? So, if it's happened again? Yeah. Actually, if we want to talk about retaliation, we are talking about missiles coming from uh, hundreds uh, of miles. We'll be back after a few words from our sponsors with the Assad interview. Resurrect Republic Truth Radio broadcast on the Republic Broadcasting Network. Man, open cows, 
Corporate media dominates the American opinion. Finding independent voices that counter this avalanche is becoming increasingly difficult. With the endless corruption running rampant throughout our government, independent voices are needed more than ever to battle the offensive against our freedoms and liberties. As a listener of RBN, no one understands this concept better than you. Now it's up to you to do your part. The time has come for you to take action and begin broadcasting the truth to hundreds or thousands of people every month. Sound impossible? Quite the contrary. With pointed slogans from LibertyStickers.com, you can reach countless sleeping Americans unaware that they live in a real-life wonderland. LibertyStickers.com has a huge inventory of political bumper stickers and messages that reflect the truth about our government, our politicians, and the future of America. With so many in stock, there's one perfect for you. Visit us today at LibertyStickers.com. Again, that's LibertyStickers.com. Do your part. Your voice is important. Let it be heard. As a listener of RBN, you're surely concerned about being informed and being ready for whatever may come. Please consider the following questionnaire as a soul-jarring wake-up call. If you answer no to more than two of these following questions, you probably aren't going to make it through any major disruption in our country. The questions were compiled by people that have been there. Are you really ready? Do you own your own firearm for the primary defense and protection of you and your loved ones? Have you ever been professionally trained to stand against life-threatening behavior? Have you ever practiced enough to fire 500 rounds during a two to four day time frame, day and night? Can you load, unload, fire and clear a jam in total darkness? Have all the adults in your household been professionally trained? Are you life and death comfortable with your abilities with pistol, revolver, shotgun and rifle? Are you aware that everything that you do to prepare for an emergency is a waste of time, money, and energy? If you haven't honed your abilities to their highest level to protect and keep what you have, do you have the repair parts that will most likely be needed for each of your firearm, and do you have the ability to install those parts? Could you completely clean every firearm you own? Are you aware that your body won't go where your mind hasn't been? In other words, without proper training, followed by regular practice, you probably will not win a gunfight. Well, how did you measure up? Take the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to start correcting your deficiencies by receiving your Commander Lifetime Membership with Front Sight Firearms Training Facility. A one-time donation to RBN for $500 will give you a Commander Lifetime Membership at Front Sight as a tremendously huge thank you bonus. See details on RBN's webpage to make it happen. The clock is ticking. You had better be ready before it happens. Father of the poor, it's built and sails Close the sea of years With no provisions, but no faces Welcome back. Welcome back. Resurrect the Republic Truth Radio broadcast on the Republic Broadcasting Network. I'm your host, Tom Lacavara Stewart. And what we're covering tonight uh, are the Assad interviews so that you can fully hear and digest what this man has to say. Uh, we are in the resurrectorepublic.chattango.com chat room, or you can go to resurrectorepublic.com. Scroll down and you'll find the chat room on the right. Everything is up and running properly. The right, uh, the right spot is in there and everything is tweaked. So uh, if you want to drop us questions, the easiest way is to go to the chat and do so if you're able to do so. Um, you can call in at 1-800-313-9443. If you have a comment regarding Assad, the interview in Syria, please. We're trying to keep the subject matter tonight. Uh, keep that in mind. Uh, so anyway, uh, let's get back to the society interview. Go ahead, Roe. Which is out of uh, our reach. But actually, the real war in Syria is not about those missiles. It's about supporting the terrorists. This is the most dangerous part of this war. And our response is going to be what we started from the very first day, is uh, smashing the terrorists everywhere in Syria. When we get rid of the terrorists, we wouldn't worry about anything else that time. So this is our response. It's a response, not reaction. So what you say is means that retaliation by the Syrian army or by the Russian will be very difficult because 
the both are very close, very wrong. Very, very For us, as a small country, uh, yeah, of course it is. Everybody knows that. It's, not, it's out of reach. I mean, they, they can uh, have missiles uh, from another continent. We all know that. They are a great power. We're not a great power. I'm talking about the Russian, this is another issue. Would you accept the finding of an OPCW investigation? Since the very first time when we had, in 2013, I think the first attacks by the terrorists on the Syrian army by chemical uh, missile at that time, we asked for investigation. We were the ones who asked for investigations. Every time there was chemical attacks or allegations about chemical attacks, we asked. And this time we are discussing with the Russians yesterday uh, during these, uh, few, uh, the last few days after the strike that we are going to work with them on uh, international investigation. But it should be impartial. We can only allow any investigation when it's impartial, when we make sure that the unbiased country will participate in this uh, delegation uh, in order to make sure that they won't use it for politicized purposes. And if they accuse the government, would you step down? If, if they accuse or if they prove? <laughs> <laughs> There's a big difference. No, they, they, are, they are already accusing the government. Uh, mm. And if you, mean, if you mean by them the West, no, we don't care about the West. Okay. If you mean the chemical uh, uh, agency, uh, if they can prove that there's attack, we have to investigate who gave the order to that attack. But 100% as Syrian army, we don't have, and we, we cannot, even if we want, we cannot. We don't have the, the means to uh, commit such attack, and we don't have the will. So you mean that you don't have chemical weapons? No, no, definitely. Uh, a few years ago, in 2013, we gave up all our arsenal. And the, uh, the chemical uh, agency announced that Syria is free of any chemical materials. Because the Pentagon said that there are uh, chemical weapons in the air base, you deny. They attacked that air base and they destroyed the depots of the, uh, different materials and there was no selling as how. If they said that we launched the sarin attack from that air base, what yeah. happened to the sarin when they attacked the depots? Did we hear about any sarin? Our chief of staff was there a few hours later. How could he go there if there was sarin gas? How could you only have six martyrs if you have hundreds of soldiers and officers working there, but there was sarin and they didn't die? In the same fabricated videos that we've been seeing about Khan Sheikhoun, when the rescuers tried to rescue the victims or the supposedly yeah. uh, dead people or yeah. uh, inf inflicted people, uh, but actually they weren't wearing any masks or any gloves. How? Where's the sarin? This should be affected right away. So this is all uh, allegation. That's, I mean, this attack and these allegations is another proof that it was fabricated and there was no sarin anywhere. If you say that you didn't give any order, it is possible that the chemical attack could have been carried out by rogue or fringe element from the army? Even if you have rogue uh, element, the army doesn't have chemical material. This is first. Second, uh, rogue army cannot uh, send airplane uh, at their will. <laughs> Whenever they want. It's airplane. It's not small car to take it from place to place or ma small machine gun to use it. You can, you can talk about somebody who's been using his uh, pistol on his behalf the way he wants and break the law. That could happen anywhere in the world. Yeah. But not the uh, airplane. This is second. Third, the Syrian army is a regular army. It's not a militia. It's a regular army. It has hierarchy. It has very clear way of orders. So you can, it, this kind of uh, rough uh, personnel try to do something against the will of the leadership of the army never happened during the last six years of uh, the war in Syria. We'll be right back after a few words from our sponsors, Resurrect the Republic, Truth Radio Broadcast on RBN with the Assad interviews. Hey, 
You are tuned in to the Republic Broadcasting Network. Visit our website by going to republicbroadcasting.org. Many people write us about their experience with Extendivite. Allow me to read you some from Amazon.com. It really does work like the review says it does. I cannot believe that after the first few days, I didn't feel as sluggish or clogged up. It has had a profound impact on my physical, emotional well-being. I'm skeptical as most people about products and their claims, and I never write reviews. But this is a wonderful product, and I recommend it to everyone. Great product. It has brought my blood pressure from the mid-150s over the 80s to the mid-130s over mid-80s along with diet and exercise in just the past couple of months. Excellent. Thank you, David. Tell us your story. Get Extendivite today. Call 1-877-928-8822 or visit heartdrop.com. Extend your life with Extendivite. Hey, honey, I'm home. I grabbed a newspaper on the way home. Look at all the news today. Don't you know that all you're going to get in the newspaper is propaganda, twisted news, and false information? Honey, this is a national newspaper. It has to be true. Ha! For some reason, the majority of the population believe anything the mainstream media tells them. The newspaper doesn't give out the important attention of what's happening to this country and news that affects our daily lives. Say... Does that newspaper mention anything about the North American Union? No, not that I can see. I didn't think so. You need to go to www.newswithviews.com, where truth is more important than political correctness. That's www.newswithviews.com. Hey, don't throw that away. We can use that in the birdcage. Okay, move over. Let me start reading newswithviews.com. The truth? Read all about it at newswithviews.com. Newswithviews.com, where reality shatters illusion. Without the right accessories, any guy can be off the mark. Whether you've invested thousands in your arsenal or you own a single trusted firearm, a visit to aroutfitting.com is in order. It's one of the finest online selections of tactical optics and AR parts and add-ons, like EOTech, quick target acquisition with no peripheral loss. Browse the full range of Nikon scopes and binoculars. AirOutfitting.com can illuminate your world with streamlight gun-mounted lights from keychain to large handhelds up to 1,100 lumens. Find some stability with Battenfield Tactical Bipods. AirOutfitting.com has CMMG gun parts, barrels, assemblies, handguards, part kits, and more plus magful clips and magazines. I know I've got you excited, so take a breath, head to aroutfitting.com. The site's super easy to navigate and features a ton of technical info, including links to manuals. We also welcome vendor and manufacturer inquiries. Remember, if you don't see it, we can get it at aroutfitting.com. broadcast on the republic broadcasting network folks you can join us over our live chat at resurrect the republic dot chat tango dot com or you can go to resurrect the republic uh, dot com and scroll down on the right hand side and you'll see us uh, in the chat room if you want to make any comments or any questions or you can call in 1-800-313-9443 uh, resurrect the republic uh, we are covering tonight the assad interviews and hearing um, something that I've heard mainstream press uh, float maybe a couple snippets here and there, but I think that this is important for people to hear um, so that they can come to an informed position and decision. So, um, <laughs> Zapia, USA's aren't mercenary armies need to end. I hear you. Okay, we're going to get back to the Assad interview. Go ahead and roll it. Did the Russian warn you before the U.S. attack and they were present in the air base? No, they didn't warn because they didn't have the time to warn because the American called them maybe a few minutes before the launching or some says after the launching because it takes uh, time to, to reach uh, the base. Uh, but uh, actually we had indications that there was something that's going, that was going mm-hmm. to happen and we took uh, many measures in that regard. The do you confirm that 20% of your air force has been destroyed in this attack, as the Americans said? I don't know what the criteria and what the uh, reference of 20% percent 
what the hundred percent for them? Is it the number of airplanes? Is it the quality? Is it the uh, how to say the active airplanes and the stored airplane? I don't know what, what do they mean by by this. No, actually, uh, what uh, we and the Russians announced about few airplanes being destroyed. Most of them are the old ones. Some of them were uh, not active. Anyway, this is the reality. And the proof that we've uh, seen the strike, we haven't stopped attacking terrorists all over Syria. So we didn't feel that we are really affected. Our firepower, our ability to attack the terrorists hasn't hey, been Mike, affected. Hey, Mike, give that a pause. Uh, now, did you hear, you heard what he just said, right? He said that the missiles that hit had very little to no effect. They hit older planes and some planes that were out of service. Now, he could just be saying that. Or, let me posit another theory, or that the targets that were involved were involved uh, specifically so that there would be little damage caused, or, there's another or, um, the firing of it pretty much breaks off all uh, ability to work with Assad to defeat ISIS. Now, who would be advantaged by stopping us from stopping terrorists and coordinating with Assad in order to do so. I'll just leave that up for your own opinion just to make a decision on that one for yourself. But also take into account the $1.4 million each one of those missiles cost, and I believe there was 100 of them. That's a $100 million punch. Um, so follow the money on that. Ought to be interesting, right? We talked about that the other night. Anyway, let's get back to the interview. By, by this strike. You know, your government said in the beginning that you hit a chemical weapon depot. Is it true? It was a possibility because when you attack uh, any target related to the terrorist, you don't know what's in it. You know that this is a target. It could be a store, it could be a warehouse, it could be a depot, it could be a camp, it could be a headquarter. You don't know. But you know that the terrorist is using this place and you attack it uh, like any other uh, Place. And that's what we've been doing uh, since the beginning of the war on daily basis, on hourly basis sometimes. Yeah. And, but you cannot tell what's within this. So that, is, that, that was one of the possibilities that the airstrikes attacked a depot of uh, chemical uh, material. But this is conflicting again with the timing of the announcement. Mm -hmm. Not because only the, the terrorists uh, announced it in the, uh, in the morning, but because their media their pages on Twitter and on the internet announced the, uh, the attack a few hours before, before the, the, the alleged one, which is uh, four in the morning. Four in the morning uh, announced that they're going to be a uh, chemical attack. We have to be ready. How did they know about it? Don't you see that uh, Han Shekhun is a huge setback for you? For the first time in six years, the U.S. attacked your army, and yesterday, after a brief honeymoon, yesterday, Tillman said that the reign of Assad family is coming to the end. Do you see, don't you think that the Han Shekhun is a huge setback for you? There's no reign of Assad family anyway in Syria. <laughs> he's dreaming. Or he's, let's say he's hallucinating. <laughs> so we wouldn't was. Uh, our time with his statement. In reality, no, actually, during the last six years, the U.S. was directly involved in supporting the terrorists everywhere in Syria, including ISIS, including al-Nusra, including all the other like-minded factions in Syria. Uh, this is clear, and this is uh, proven uh, in Syria. Uh, well, if you want to talk about the direct attacks, uh, actually, only a few months ago, there was more dangerous attack than the recent one, uh, just before Obama left, I think a few weeks before he left, uh, it was in the other in the eastern part of Syria when they attacked a very strategic mountain. Uh, it was a Syrian base, a regular Syrian uh, army base. Uh, uh, and uh, that helped ISIS took over that mountain. And if the Syrian army wasn't resilient and strong enough to repel ISIS, the city of the Azor would have been now in the hands of ISIS means direct link between Deir Zor and Mosul in Iraq, which would have been a very strategic gain uh, to ISIS. So actually, no, the 
uh, American government was directly involved. But this time, why, why did they attack directly? Because, as I said, the terrorists in that area were collapsing. Mm -hmm. So the United States didn't have any other choice to support their proxies, the terrorists, but to directly attack the Syrian army. Because they sent them all kinds of armament, and they didn't work. That's so why. For you, it's not a huge setback after the whole. No, 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 it was actually part of the context, the same context for six years. Ah, yeah. It took different shapes, but the core of the American policy and the Western policy toward what's happening in Syria it hasn't changed at all. Forget about the statements. Sometimes you have high pitch statements, sometimes you have low pitch statements, but it's the same policy. <laughs> you have gradually pushed most of the rebel into Idlib. Do you plan to attack it next? Uh, we're going to attack terrorists anywhere in Syria, Idlib or any other place. What the timing, what the priority is, this is a military issue, should be discussed on the military uh, level. <clears throat> you said before that Raqqa is a priority for your government, but the forces advancing on the city are mostly US-backed Kurds. Aren't you afraid of being excluded from the liberation of Raqqa? No, we support whoever wants to liberate any city from the terrorists. But that doesn't mean to be liberated from terrorists and being occupied by American forces, for example, or by another proxy, or another terrorist. So uh, it's not clear who's going to liberate Raqqa. Is it really Syrian forces that's going to hand it over to the Syrian army? Is it going to be in cooperation with the Syrian army? Uh, it's not clear yet. But the, what we hear is only allegations about liberating Raqqa. We've been hearing that for nearly a year now, or less than a year. But nothing happened on the ground. So it's just, uh, let's say, a hypothetical question because there's nothing concrete on the ground. The U.S. and Russia are the co-sponsor of Geneva process. Because of the tension between the two countries, do you think that this process can continue? Look, there's a big difference between the process being active, which could happen any time to reactivate the process, and to be effective. Till this moment, it's not effective. Why? Because the United States is not serious in achieving any political solution. They want to use it as umbrella for the terrorists, or they want to get in this forum what they didn't get on the ground in the battlefield. Uh, that's why it wasn't effective uh, at all. Now, it's the same situation. We don't, we don't see this, this administration uh, serious in that regard, because they still support the same terrorists. So we can say, yes, it could be reactivated, but we, don't, we cannot say we expect it to be effective or, produ or productive. No. After six years, Mr. President, aren't you tired? Actually, the only thing that could uh, make pressure on you, uh, not the political situation, not the military situation, actually the human situation in Syria, the daily bloodletting, the daily bloodshedding, the suffering uh, and the hardship uh, that inflicted every house in Syria, this is the only painful thing that could make you feel tired, if it's accurate to, to say tired. Well, regardless, if you talk about the war, about the politics, about the relation with the West, no, I don't feel tired at all because we are defending our country and we're not going to get tired at all in that regard. What makes you lose sleep? Again, the suffering of the Syrian people, the, the humanitarian uh, interaction between me uh, and the, every Syrian uh, family, directly or indirectly. This is the only thing that could uh, deprive me from uh, sleep uh, from time uh, to time, but not the Western statements and not the threat of the support of the terrorists. Today, there are people from Fua and Kifaya who will move from their village to, uh, uh, to Damascus or to Aleppo. You, don't af you are not afraid that, uh, in fact, it will be displacement of population and the Syria after the war will not be the same as Syria before? Uh, the displacement in that uh, context is compulsory. We didn't choose it. We wish that everyone could stay in his village and his city, but uh, those people, like many other civilians in different areas, were surrounded and besieged by the terrorists, and they've been killed on a daily basis. So they had to leave. 
but of course they're going to go back to their, to their cities after the liberation. That happened in many other areas where the people are going back to their homes. So it's temporary. Uh, talking about demographic changes uh, is not in the sake or in the interest of the Syrian uh, society when it's permanent. As long as it's temporary, we wouldn't worry about it. Mr. President, I want to thank you very much for this interview. Yeah, thank you. It was very interesting. And, uh, not at all. Okay, thank now you that, was, thank you. that was the, uh, I believe the French, or through France, the French interview with Assad. Um, we also have uh, one to share with you that was recorded by NBC. Now, this video, I can promise you, was not edited, clipped in any way, shape, or form. It was recorded, actually, by the staff of, the, of Bashar al-Assad uh, so that uh, no excerpts could be taken from it because uh, we all know how the fake news goes uh, today. Uh, that, that comment that uh, Iran wanted to wipe Israel off the map uh, was uh, spread far and wide, and many people are still taught to believe that, and that's not what was said at all. And this is the same type of propaganda war. So this is why I'm bringing it to you full and unedited, and why I think it's so important to do so is, you know, again, forming that critical thinking, well-informed opinion. Uh, you have to hear what all sides have to say and then determine, is this any of my business is this something that the United States is in danger of? And if not, who's to profit or who's to uh, advance their agenda by accomplishing these things, especially when we know that Trump was so against uh, this involvement in Syria and, and as well as taking out ISIS, so, which is what Assad was doing. Um, it seems like every time he's about ready to beat them, uh, some great allegation comes against him. So this is what makes me very skeptical as to what I'm hearing in the corporate-controlled media uh, and the left and the right who have trumpeted for the destruction of Iran and, and for this war. Uh, it's all, you know, it, it just keeps, keep the same narrative keeps getting played. Then you have these dissenting voices, and when they raise their ugly heads, they're just about chopped off. Um, <laughs> it's just, it, it's amazing. So anyway, I'm going to get to this uh, uh, second interview, which is... Uh, of Assad on NBC. Um, so I'd, what I'd like you guys to do, keep in mind, uh, we have RTR at truth, or RTR truth media at gmail.com. We have the chat uh, at resurrect the republic dot chat tango dot com open. Um, so if you want to drop us a line, you can drop us a line during the show and we'll answer any questions that you may have or uh, read out any comments that you may have or you can call in 1-800- uh, three one three nine four four three. So uh, you know you can support this broadcast by going to resurrecttherepublic dot com and clicking on that PayPal button all the way at the top right. You know I, I don't know of any uh, many mainstream or alternative media or mainstream media that bring you these full interviews, unedited, un you know unclipped, uncut, untwisted, unspun. Uh, I know that it makes for a little tiny bit of dry material tonight, but you know what? This is important. This is important that we know everything that's said in, and so that we can see when we're being lied to directly. Now, how would you know if, if you heard in the mainstream media that Assad made some sort of allegation uh, if you didn't take the time to listen for yourself what the man had to say? So uh, we're already... Uh, involved, which I don't agree with, so now that we are involved, now that we have to apply a little bit of extra uh, due diligence to the situation, I believe. So anyway, uh, for those of you that may have turned in late, we may be switching times, we're not sure yet, we're working on that right now, we're coordinating uh, with uh, the owner, we're with, with John Statmiller, and we're, we're working on that right now, trying to get a couple people to come together on the same page at the same time. Uh, but keep in mind, if we do move, uh, you know, I've had some comments saying, don't move, don't move, you know, this is what I listen to. Well, keep in mind, uh, we do podcast everything, and as well, we're on iHeartRadio, we're on the RBN archives, um, so you don't have to miss a show uh, that we play, uh, you know, you can you can find a, a, a medium that you can call and even... Uh, although we, and, and like I said, this is still up in the air. We're working on it right now, so we don't know yet. Um, 
so anyway, we do need your your support. Uh, also, uh, I'm coming up, I'm going to be sharing a story uh, from Bundy Ranch to Malheur to hear how my uh, physical health has been uh, and what you can do to uh, um, bring yourself back to a more healthy lifestyle. Uh, I, I don't do the Alex Jones things. I don't have a hundred things to sell you, uh, but I have some really good ideas and some amazing things have happened in my life that I want to share with you. Um, you know, a lot of negative things have happened, but some amazing things have, have happened in my life that has uh, uh, caused me to drop nearly 30 pounds in, in the course of a month. Um, by just changing my habits and, and going with a program that, you know, I'm not even, I'm not even selling or anything, but, uh, we're going to be talking about that later on in the week too, uh, as well as chemtrails, um, um, many other subjects, uh, we got to get back on this whole gun control thing too. So hang in there. We'll be right back. Resurrect the Republic Truth Radio broadcast on the Republic Broadcasting Network. This is the most transparent administration in history. Homeowners, are you in foreclosure, expecting to be served with a foreclosure lawsuit, or suspect your lender has coerced you into an illegal mortgage transaction? A huge number of mortgages made in the last 10 years have legal issues and are possibly defective. State laws and the U.S. Supreme Court have upheld that defective mortgage documents are grounds for foreclosure defense and for counterclaims in favor of the homeowner. If your mortgage has been sold or assigned since closing the loan, it may be defective and you may be paying the wrong party and the lender may not have standing or the right to foreclose or collect payments under the law. If you would like to know if your mortgage is legal or not, or know if you are paying the right party, we can help. Our initial consultations are free of charge. We are not attorneys. We are legal researchers and work closely with experienced lawyers who know how to help you find the evidence to help you keep your home. Call toll-free 1-855-2-KEEP-IT. That's 1-855-THE NUMBER 2 keep it today so you love talk radio then you'll love talkstreamlive.com talkstream live is always on 24 7 with the best streaming talk shows find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones it's free readily available online or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier just go to talkstreamlive.com be sure to download the free apps from google play or the itunes app store Do you or a loved one suffer migraine headaches? Listen to what scientist Kurt Hendricks has to say. If you are one of the millions of people who get migraines, you need to know about MyRelief. Hi, I'm Kurt Hendricks, the scientist who created MyRelief, the patented dietary supplement that addresses nutritional deficiencies in adults and children with migraines. Thousands of physicians and pharmacists recommend MyRelief. Call 800-MIG-7354 or visit MIG911.com. My name is Don Wiskin, and at 42 years old, I suffered a massive heart attack, lost 35% of my heart to damaged tissue, and was supposed to spend the rest of my life on disability. What did I do? I took Extendivite, a garlic and cayenne mix of seven herbs which rebuilt my heart and gave me back my life. For over 17 years now, I have made this formula available to you so you don't have to suffer the same thing I did. Clean your blocked arteries and strengthen your heart and boost your natural immune system. I'm 60 years old now and I still work every day. To get your Extendivite, call 1-877-928-8822. That's 1-877-928-8822 or visit heartdrop.com. Extendivite is only $69.95 for a two-month supply of either capsules or liquid. Extend your life with Extend Overnight. Welcome back. Resurrect the Republic Truth Radio broadcast on RBN. 
Oh, I'd like to thank Terrence uh, for his donation. Folks, uh, you guys know we're just getting back to this, so we're trying to adjust into the proper times and um, get our things back together again. Um, you know, we're, we're putting forth a solid effort, so I'd ask you to go to resurrectrepublic.com, click on the PayPal button, uh, send us some love. Anyway, I want to get back to this Assad interview and see if we can close this out, uh, you know, within a reasonable time frame. Any of you that want to call in and comment, please feel free to do so. Um, you know, I'd like to have a discussion with you about it. I'd like to hear what you have to, to say about it, what you, what you think about it. Um, do you think that, uh, this is a false flag like I do? Do you think that this is a pretext uh, like I do? It, it appears that way. Um, so anyway, let's get back to Assad. The war here in Syria is now in its sixth year. Hundreds of thousands are dead. Half the population have fled their homes. Half the country is in the hands of rebels or of ISIS. I've just had a rare opportunity to sit down with the country's president, Bashar al-Assad. What he says in this exclusive interview may surprise you. About ISIS, the war and Russia. About President Obama, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump and about how he feels about this war personally. We met at his office here in Damascus, and as with every interview he gives to foreign news media, it was filmed by the presidential press office. Mr. President, thank you for having us and uh, allowing NBC News to ask you some important questions. You're most welcome in Damascus. A few weeks ago, you told lawmakers here that you would retake every inch of Syria. The U.S. State Department called that delusional. You're a long way from winning this war, aren't you? Never mind retaking every inch of Syria. Uh, actually, the Syrian army has made a lot of advancement uh, recently. And that's the goal of, uh, of, of any army uh, or any government. Uh, I don't think uh, the statement of the United States uh, relevant. It doesn't reflect any respect to the international law, uh, to the Charter of the United Nations. It doesn't reflect uh, uh, respect of uh, the sovereignty of a country that it had the right to take control of its land. How long do you think this will take you to win this war? Uh, you're talking about uh, something that's related to many factors. The most important factor is how long are the supporters of those terrorists are keep, uh, going to keep supporting them, especially Turkey and Qatar and Saudi Arabia, with the, uh, uh, with the uh, endorsement of some Western country, including the United States. If you don't have that support, it won't take uh, more than a few months. More than a few months. Yeah. You see, I've been here 10 times, and I've heard your governors say it will take a month to retake Homs. It will take six months to retake somewhere else. It, it always takes longer than that. So, realistically, this will take years, won't it? We and will be back soon. It depends on how much support the terrorists are going to We will be back soon on. with the NBC interview with Bashar al-Assad. Uh, please feel free to call in. Uh, we'll be here in the next hour. Uh, Chat Tango, the Resurrected Republic. .chatango com or rtrtruthmedia gmail com. We'll see you on the other side. People tell us about their experience with Extendivite. Just listen to what Glenn has to say. Prior to taking it, I had diabetic neuropathy. The Extendivite reduced that significantly. Acid reflux was reduced. I had athlete's foot, very severe. Trimmed that down to about 75% dandruff. Almost completely gone. I had a simple occipital neuralgia at the base of my skull. I was having migraines reduced by about 90%. Heart palpitations, my heart would kind of stall out. I would skip a beat. Very uncomfortable. And when walking from downstairs going to sleep, by the time I got to the bedroom, which is just one flight of stairs, my heart was pounding, coming out of my chest. My vision was blurry. This completely solved that problem. Great product. Thanks. Tell us your story. 
Get Extended by today. Call 1-877-928-8822 or visit heartdrop.com. Extend your life with Extend Your You're listening to Republic Broadcasting Network. Because you can handle the truth. Truth, truth. Madam Speaker, I have a few questions for my colleagues. Welcome back. Resurrect Republic Truth Radio broadcast on RBN. Um, We have been playing the NBC interview unedited, recorded by uh, Assad's uh, people there. No clips. uh, Nothing taken out of context. This is the raw interview as it was given. So, you know, let's get back to this. Uh, Keep in mind, you know, we're, we're here at our rtrtruthmedia at gmail.com, uh, as well as the uh, resurrectorepublic.com. You can go to website, go to the chat room, or resurrectorepublic.chattango.com. We're there. Um, so, you know, this is uh, something I'm really looking for your input. I want to know what you think, what, what you uh, have to say about what you're hearing. All right, go ahead and roll the interview. Uh, that's why I said that depends on how much support the terrorists are going to have. How much recruitment are you going to, to have in Turkey uh, with the Saudi money to have more uh, uh, terrorists coming to Syria? Their aim is to prolong the war. So they can prolong it if they want. And they, they've, they, they've already succeeded in, in that. So that depends on the question. If you're talking about how much it's going to take as only Syrian conflict, isolated conflict, this is where it won't take more than a few months. But if it's not isolated as it, it's the case today, with the interference of many regional and international powers, it will go in to take a long time. And no one had the answer that you have because nobody knows how the war is going to develop. A year ago, the war was going quite differently. You made a speech in which you said you were short of troops. You had to give up some areas reluctantly. What changed after that was that Russia entered the war. That's the real reason this war is turning, isn't it? That Russia is on your side. Definitely, uh, the Russian support uh, of the Syrian army has tipped the scales against the terrorists. That's, it's the uh, crucial factor. It is, it is definitely. At the same time, uh, Turkey and Saudi Arabia has uh, sent more troops since that uh, Russian legal intervention uh, started. But at, uh, in spite of that, it was the crucial factor, as so you just mentioned. you owe President Putin a lot. Uh, everyone who stood be- be- beside us, Russian, Iranian, and even the Chinese stood, but each one in its own way, whether political, military, or economical, because it's not one factor. You cannot only talk about uh, the firepower or the, uh, the human resources. It's a multi-factor issue. All those countries supported Syria, besides other countries supported to a lesser degree. Has President Putin demanded anything of you? What's the deal? When, when, he, when he wanted to uh, intervene, he didn't ask for anything. Nothing? For a simple reason. First of all, politics built on values. This is very important. The second thing, their interest is common interest with us now because they are fighting the same terrorists that they should fight in Russia. We are fighting the terrorists that could be fighting in Europe, in the United States, anywhere, anywhere else in the world. But the difference between President Putin and the other Western officials that he could see that clearly, while the other officials in Europe uh, or in the Western general couldn't see that. That's why his uh, intervention is based on values uh, and at the same time based on the interest of the Russian people. Do you speak much with him? When, when there's something to speak about, of course we speak, or through officials. How often, for example, this year have you spoken with him? <laughs> I didn't count them, but many times. We spoke many times. And how would you describe your relationship with him? Very frank, very honest, uh, mutual respect. But he has demanded nothing of you. Is nothing that at the all. case? Nothing at all. Because the suspicion is that Russia maybe working in concert with the United States and Secretary of State Kerry is meeting Vladimir Putin Thursday in Moscow. The suspicion is that they are coming to some sort of deal that might be bad news for you. First of all, regarding the first part, if you wanted to ask me for something, he would ask me to fight the terrorists because this is where his interest as president and as a country, I mean Russia, lies. 
second, regarding that allegation from time to time that the Russian met uh, with the American and they discussed something about the Syrian issue, like uh, in order to give the impression that they are def deciding what's going to happen in Syria. Many times, the Russian officials many times said clearly that the Syrian issue is related to the Syrian people. And yesterday, the Minister Lavrov said that clearly, said we cannot sit with the American to define what the Syrian wants to do. This is a Syrian issue. Only the Syrian people can define the future of their country and how to solve their problem. The role of Russia and the United States to, uh, to offer the, the atmosphere, the international atmosphere, to protect the Syrian from any intervention. The problem in that, in that regard is that the Russians are honest. The Americans didn't deliver anything in that regard. But this is not to take the decision about what we have to do as Syrians. So just to be clear, neither Foreign Secretary Lavrov nor President Putin has ever talked to you about political transition, about a day when you would leave power. That's never come up. Never, because as I said, this is related to the Syrian people. Only the Syrian people define who's going to be the president, when to come and when to go. They never said a single word regarding this. And you're not worried in the least about Secretary Kerry meeting Vladimir Putin and coming to an understanding in which you may have to leave power? No, for one reason, because the, the, their politics, I mean, the Russian politics is not based on making deals. It's based on values. And that's why you don't uh, see uh, any achievement between them and the American because different principles. The American uh, politics is based on... Uh, uh, making deals regardless of the values, which is not the case for the Russian. But of course it's not just Russia that's bombing your enemies, it's the United States. Do you welcome American airstrikes against ISIS? No, because it's not legal, first of all, it's not legal. The it's Russian, not legal for Russia to do it, is it? No, they are invited legally and formally by the Syrian government. It's the right of any government to invite any other country to help in any issue. So they are legal in Syria while the Americans are not legal with their allies. Of course, all of them are not legal. This is for a second. Since the Russian intervention, the terrorism uh, has been, let's say, uh, regressing. While before that, uh, and during the American illegal intervention with their allies, uh, ISIS was expanding, and the terrorism was expanding and taking over new areas in Syria. Uh, they're not serious. So I cannot say I welcome the unseriousness, unseriousness and to be in Syria illegal. Thousands of missions, hundreds of airstrikes, the United States is not being serious? Uh, the question is not, uh, it's not how many strikes, uh, what, what the achievement, that's the question. The reality is telling, the reality is telling that since the beginning of the, uh, the American airstrikes, the, uh, the terrorism has been expanding and prevailing, not vice versa. It's only shrinked when the Russians intervened. So this is reality, we have to, read, we have to talk about facts. It's not only about uh, the pro forma action that they've been taking. So American airstrikes are ineffective and counterproductive? Yes, it is counterproductive in, in somehow. When, when, they are, when the terrorism is growing, it is counterproductive. That's correct. Whose fault is that? Is that a military fault or is President Obama simply not being, let's say, ruthless enough? Yeah. Uh, no, first of all, it's not about being ruthless. It's about being uh, genuine. It's about the real intentions. It's about being serious. It's about having the will. The United States doesn't have the will to uh, defeat the terrorists. It had the will to control them and to use them as a card like they did in Afghanistan. Uh, that, that will reflect it on the military aspect of the issue. If you want to compare more than 120 or 30 uh, Russians airstrike in few areas in Syria compared to uh, 10 or 12 uh, uh, American allies airstrikes in Syria and Iraq, it means militarily nothing. But that military uh, ineffectiveness is a reflection of the political will. There was a political will, as you put it, to okay, remove pause you that from power. Right that for a second, Mike. Now, folks, I, I, I didn't play a trick on you, but I threw something in there because I, wanted, I really wanted you to listen and to hear if you noticed anything about the two interviews that I've just played. One of them, the first one, was just recently done. The second one was done under the Obama administration. 
Do you hear any difference from the line of questioning or the responses from either interview? Now, I can tell you from President Obama to President Trump, regardless of personalities involved, you take the positions of American presidents in Syria, which has been a roller coaster, and you listen to the other side, and the other side story has not changed, has remained the same. I think that that's very, uh, you know, a very interesting fact involved here. I think that it's uh, uh, more than a coincidence, uh, for sure. I think that there's there, there's there are some things really to be considered about. Uh, taking these interviews and putting them side by side, which is why I, I did this. Lori Anderson and I kind of talked about this because uh, it doesn't sound like there's any difference between the old guard and the new guard. Now, what was in place prior to Obama being there was the project for a new American century uh, and their goal to, uh, you know, do exactly what they're doing, the Yunnan project. So anyway, from Zapia in the chat room, he has to say that the war was all but over before this fake gas attack excuse for war games, which I believe he's he's correct. And I feel it's Trump playing the deep, deep state, or as some are calling 4D chess, and since nothing has really seemed to come from it, backs that idea. Well, you know, I agree with a part of that. However, looking back into history, and that's what I try and do, look back, I look at what's going on now, I look what was going on under Obama, I look at what was going on under Bush, and what's the differences here? And when did the strategy change? It happened after 9-11. And what foreign policy was put into place, but the project for a new American century, rebuilding America's defenses? And who was a part of that whole PNAC thing? Now, I actually think that Assad in, in both of these interviews is showing a great deal of restraint. I think that I would be a little bit more openly critical as to some of the players involved in this scenario, the situation. So anyway, uh, you can patch Chris in. Chris, Chris, welcome to the show. Well, thank you very much, Tom. You know, your observations are very similar to mine, although mine would go back a little farther. When back when I heard the Make America Great Again, the MAGA of uh, Trump, yeah. it occurred to me that it was much like Obama's mantra of hope and change, and basically we're getting Obama light with Trump. And I don't see anything that make me change my mind at this point. Because as you observed, we got the same policies of war making on the Middle East and carrying out the PNAC program agenda of complete domination, demonation, which is really the Zionist agenda put forth as the American agenda, which is really we're just the surrogate. Uh, ding, 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 and, ding. Uh, and we are providing the fodder for our, uh, with our best of our best over there to die for America, for Israel. Uh, why not send Israel over there to do it instead would be my question. If that's what they want to oh. do. Yeah, I, I agree. And, you know, what we're doing to uh, these veterans, uh, coming up in the week, we're going to be getting into the history of psychology, um, well, which is, in my opinion, a big pseudoscience. And part of what, uh, so, you know, it, it's social conditioning, really, uh, for the most part. I'm sure that there's therapists out there to help people. But look at these soldiers that are going over there uh, and what they go through, and they come back here and they diagnose them with mental disorders. It's not a mental disorder, and that's a life experience that you just force this person into, um, and, you know, it, it, it drastically alters them. Well, absolutely, Tom. The mindset of people cannot be changed when you're having to heap warfare of the most egregious nature and destroy men, women, and children indiscriminately. It has to change the character of the mind of the man. Of course, those are external cause circumstances that manifest themselves in the individual because he's thinking he's doing it to fight for his country, defend America, and the other hooey they feel is full of when we're really prosecuting <laughs> somebody else's agenda entirely, not America's. Americans don't support this type of activity of warning against somebody who hasn't committed a violent act against us whatsoever. But the 
you probably want to have me along with your conversation about the so-called psychiatry, which is oh, I already to... intended it. I already intended to. <laughs> well, and I, in fact, I was uh, I had the pleasure of speaking with a very astute intellectual. And I think he's a man of color. Um, um, I should be able to tell you, Tyler. Uh, I can't think of his last name right now. I apologize, but I spoke with him while he's incarcerated. He's a veteran. Uh, he is a very studied individual and has great amounts of occult and secret knowledge of the mystery religions and of ancient Babel, Sumer, and Ferris, and those places that we are not taught much about. And so that's what makes him a danger, why they've locked him up in this so-called residential care. That's what they call the FEMA modification facilities, mind control, so they can obliterate somebody, do a psycholobotomy via the drugs that they claim are suicidal psychotropic drugs that are supposedly treating him and making better, which really causing to have the symptoms they want to so they can color him as uh, insane, psychotic, neurotic, or otherwise uh, possessed or something. Yes, I, I agree. And, you know, just like we see all these kids in these schools being given uh, uh, Ritalin for ADD, uh, you know, I have to, you know, do a disclosure to my audience. One of the things that I've never really talked about, uh, when I was a young man, um, you know, they, they, they tried diagnosing me with depression and they gave me Depakote and a couple other different uh, uh, compounds that uh, had effects on me that I was n not at all happy with. And, and, you know, we're seeing that addiction, there's so many people that are addicted to drugs that start out on psychotropics at a young age. You know, uh, I don't agree with, with Tom Cruise about too much stuff. But, uh, you know, the Scientology and all of that. But, you know, that's that's his own thing. But I do happen to agree with his assessment on psychology and and most media pundits not knowing the history of it and, and how it's it's brought about the social change and the change of public opinion. And this is what I see in this Assad situation going on is that there is an information war. There was an information war to try and make Assad seem like the devil incarnate. Uh, so that it would give the moral justification for us to, to allow the government to violate the Constitution and get us into a foreign, foreign entanglement that is of no threat to us. What do you think? Uh, another Vietnam, if you will. Another international yeah. police action, which is really a war in the guise of a police action against a people that have done nothing to... Uh, attract that type of attention of the preposterous absurdity of the insinuation of a hypothecation of some terrible horrific thing they've supposedly done to their people well it's their people we should be paying attention to our people not other people's people i mean yes it's horrific <laughs> yeah. to do people for sure anywhere and shouldn't be authorized but for us to presume to assume that we can judge others any better than we judge ourselves is it better for us to conduct war on our own people and declare them enemies of the state I think yeah. really the states yeah. are enemy, they're not the state's enemy. Yeah, you know, you have political prisoners inside of uh, um, uh, blackout information prisons, to get prison inside a prison. And, you know, I, I, I heard, you know, one of the things that when I was talking with the more liberal representatives of the government, I'm not going to get into it until I'm long away from all of this, uh, but, you know, just for declaring beliefs in the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, believing that the local representation closest to the people should be the strongest. I was asked if I had ever been in for a mental health evaluation. And I said, what would, ask, what would make you ask that? The judges made no determination of any kind. Uh, she's, this has never been, you know, through all of the stuff I've been through, it's never been, this is based upon strictly the statement that I had just made uh, regarding my support and defense for the Constitution. And so they're, they're declaring uh, people who would stand for constitutional principles. And this is conservative and liberal alike. I've, I've met like the, the Jimmy Doors and, and folks like me, uh, both sides of the aisle, who, who resist the mainstream narrative. And they, they call us crazy. They call us conspiracy <laughs> theorists. Well, excuse me? What is, what is, when you're getting involved in a war in a foreign nation that has nothing to do with endangering the continental United States, uh, there's an agenda. And technically, by definition, an agenda is two or more people conspiring to achieve a political uh, uh, aim. That is, by definition, a conspiracy. 
and they've just taken the plain truth in English of the matter and just bashed it. So we'll be back after a few words from our sponsors. Resurrect the Republic, Truth Radio Broadcast on RBN. Tom Lackey, Stewart, and Chris Gabe. Homeowners, if your lender has gone out of business or sold your transaction to another lender or servicer, you may be the victim of a wrongful foreclosure resulting in the loss of your home. If you've already lost your home, are in foreclosure, or even in good standing, you can challenge the mortgage transaction's illegal issue and your property can be restored to you. And your foreclosure can be stopped or reversed and the mortgage transaction declared unenforceable. State laws, U.S. title codes, the Uniform Commercial Codes, and U.S. Supreme Court rulings have upheld that defective mortgage documentations can reverse or stop foreclosures and enforce property title claims in favor of the homeowner. We are having successes in stopping the process of foreclosure, the enforcement of the foreclosure judgments, the sale of property, and evictions after the sale. We are not attorneys, and we don't give legal advice. We are a professional team of legal researchers, providing forensic mortgage audits and expert witnesses. We have the knowledge to produce the evidence and enforce laws regarding your legal issues. We've been in business for 12 years without a complaint. Consultations are free, and we provide a free title search to confirm if your mortgage has legal defects. Please call 855-253-3748. 855-2-KEEP-IT-TODAY. Folks, we're living in a world the likes of which we've never perceived any clearer than we do now. The plan for global governance has been in the works for generations and would have likely been achieved by now but for the fact that the globalists left open their Achilles heel. With all their tools, Federal Reserve System, fiat currency, no child left behind, and then common core education introduced to our schools to dumb us down, vaccines, pharmaceuticals to lobotomize us, GMO foods, insertion of compromised or bought and paid for politicians, judges, mainstream media propaganda, all pieced together like a puzzle designed to ultimately bring the world under submission. But with all their strategy, they forgot one thing, knowledge and knowledge is power. With knowledge, their bombardment is nullified. Folks, with that, as brilliant and knowledgeable as you've become, among the wisest audience of any radio audience in the world, and you are, I want you to take a moment to reflect and ask yourself, how much of that knowledge did I obtain from Republic Broadcasting Network? How high has my consciousness been raised since I've been a listener? How fast am I now able to discriminate truth from fake news by being a Republic Broadcasting listener? How clear am I now able to see the world since I've been listening to RBN? Ask yourselves those questions, folks. Then ask yourself, what is that knowledge worth to me? Like my morning coffee, how would I survive without it? A voice of truth and a sea of lies. Do we not all need to make sure it survives? Like public broadcasting, we are now finding we can only survive with listener support. Censorship, advertisers being attacked, truth itself being attacked. It's the only way through this. We at Republic Broadcasting humbly ask you to become a supporter. Look at your budget and make a determination of what Republic Broadcasting is worth to you and what you can afford on a monthly basis. Go to republicbroadcasting.org and pledge 20, 30, 40, 50, if possible, 100 a month or more if it's affordable. Click the Donate button and become a regular monthly donor. Assure both us and yourself that Republic Broadcasting Truth will continue to flow like that morning coffee. The network thanks you. Well, of London down in Texas, all of the telephone lines are down. Welcome back. Resurrect the Republic. Truth Radio Broadcast on the Republic Broadcasting Network. All right. So, um, another comment that came in, but since the USA is Israel's rabid dog, we are there. Not had Yahoo wants us there. The Warhawks and the Pentagon want us there. And which which is evidence of the so-called deep state and the strings they pull. Yeah, one of the con- one of the you know I think that's a good observation. One of the things that I'm concerned about um, are the the PNAC Zionists that um, that Trump chose to be around him. Now, some people say he had to. Some people, do you know, 
look, I, you know, from my research going all the way back with, you know, with Bruce, Bruce Ray Riggs and the Office of the Presidency and what the United States uh, Incorporated really is, um, you know, I, I think that sometimes we can put too much faith and sometimes too much castigation on the guy that's in that office because really it is its own animal there. Uh, we do know many who are pulling the strings. So why should it surprise us? that people like John Bolton shouldn't be applied to the situation. Now, I would like any of you who would, you know, I've been really trying to mull over this whole 4D chess thing because I, I do see a lot of things that Trump is doing that I like. However, um, you know, I, I can like the way you're building me a house, but if you throw a hammer at me and hit me in the forehead, then I'm going to call you out on it, right? I mean, so here's where... RBN is a little different than most other conservative-leaning networks. Um, mm-hmm. it, uh, it, we have to call stuff out for what it is, don't we, Chris? Well, Tom, you know, it, it's very uh, well known here in Las Vegas and some of the other truth locations around La, uh, the world that our local Adelson, of the Sands Hotel Corporation, uh, was the one who pulled the string and had Trump appoint John Bolton to that position because he's a shill for Israel. Mm-hmm, the, mm-hmm. Israel firsters, that's what these people do. They always promote their uh, people that are going to promote their view of reality. And it's a very dangerous concept. If you'll let me go back just uh, before our break on the conversation, there's a document that you and the listeners really should be aware of. It's called Psycho-Political Warfare by Kenneth Goff, G-O-O-F, and it has a companion, a little brief, of a pamphlet called Brainwashing by Lavarenti Berea, or Beria. He was a former head of the Soviet KGB, so this guy knows a little bit about brainwashing and the techniques that are used to do it. And this psychopolitical warfare, what it tells you is that psychology, psychiatry, and so-called mental health are the schemes for the so-called European psychiatrists who are the only ones competent to make these sophisticated uh, interpretations and subjective analyses to qualify whether anybody is expert to determine if somebody else is psychological damaged or need of care, as they call it, the celebration of care, like at Bohemian Grove, in my estimation, and to give them these drugs so they can psycholobotomize for electroshock therapy and uh, take care of all their uh, enemies that way and have them locked away and have them electroshock therapy, have their brain erased, give them drugs to erase their brain and turn them into mush. These are things that these people do, and this is what they're using these tools for. I'm a victim of that very same uh, practice, as you probably are. This uh, guy, Tyler, is the same victim. Uh, there's a Another couple of people, Joey in Oklahoma is another one that's being victimized this way. It's how you prosecute your political enemies, shut down the truth tellers, the dissemination of the truth, like is popular here on the Republic Broadcasting Network, and uh, pretend that your people have something wrong with them when really all it is is they see things clearly, they expose the truth, they do their duty under Ezekiel 33.6 as a watcher on the wall and blow that shofar, to wake up America right now, warn them of the dangers that befall America if they don't wake up and find out who our enemies really are. And our enemies really want to kill us, I assure you. And they will do anything, uh, any means or schemes they can dream up to do so. So it's really hey. dangerous for being a truth teller in America. Hey, Chris, what was that um, What was that, that, that you told me to pull up uh, from Doc? Yeah, that's uh, Psycho-Political Warfare. By Kenneth Goff. There's a, a newer iteration of it that's got a head of with a like a skull head with lightning bolts coming out of the head on one of the downloads that you come up on the internet. But it's it's been out there for quite a long time, and this is you know part of the Saul Alinsky model, uh, the Clarence and Fliven model. This is what Sigmund Freud and Edwin Bernays, the father of propaganda, who their propaganda had become so distasteful, they came up with a Ian Gordon R. Watson, the first executive head of public relations at J.P. Morgan Chase Bank, uh, they concocted the title of public relations, it's actually public sexual relations, mind fornication, where they fill the people's head full of lies and deceptions and try to tell them it's the truth and get them to be deceived, to believe that this 
psychiatry and psychology and other perversions. Yeah, and believe that it's believe that it has some some valid purpose other than making people oh, twisted. Yeah, <laughs> All right, we got to go to we got to go to break. We'll be right back, folks. Resurrect the Republic Truth Radio broadcast. Tom Lacavara, Stewart, Chris Cave. You are tuned in to the Republic Broadcasting Network. Visit our website by going to republicbroadcasting.org. I'm getting older and noticing that my body just doesn't work as well as it used to. So I like to keep fit as possible by hitting the gym a few times a week. Recently, I started having a nagging bicep pain and it got so bad I couldn't even lift the weights. When I was complaining about it to a friend, he told me about Angioprim. He said chelation helps remove toxins, heavy metals, and cholesterol in veins and arteries that may cause blockages. You know, after just one week of taking Angioprim, the pain was gone and now I'm back in the gym full strength. Scientific research proves the active ingredient in angioprim has superior oral chelation action that helps promote cardiovascular health. So to learn more, go to angioprim.com. That's A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M.com. Or talk to a trained consultant. Call angioprim toll-free at 877-882-7221. You'll feel better with more energy. Call 877-882-7221. Or go to the website, angioprim.com. Many people write us about their experience with Extendivite. Allow me to read a few from Amazon.com. Dr. Sam Serino reviewed the Extendivite product. Good ingredients, feeling much better since taking product. It seems that the tablets work well. Once again, thank you for your product. My acid reflux has really improved thanks to the Extendivite. Together with my thumb joints, the pain is gone and I'm able to grip things much better. My friend has peripheral arterial disorder and their lower legs were hurting in a red color, but thankfully, there has been a significant improvement. Kind regards, Janice. My husband feels a big difference using Extendivite. Thank you. Tell us your story. Get Extendivite today. Call 1-877-928-8822. That's 1-877-928-8822. Or visit heartdrop.com. Extend your life with Extendivite. Corporate media dominates the American opinion. Finding independent voices that counter this avalanche is becoming increasingly difficult. With the endless corruption running rampant throughout our government, independent voices are needed more than ever to battle the offensive against our freedoms and liberties. As a listener of RBN, no one understands this concept better than you. Now it's up to you to do your part. The time has come for you to take action and begin broadcasting the truth to hundreds or thousands of people every month. Sound impossible? Quite the contrary. With pointed slogans from LibertyStickers.com, you can reach countless sleeping Americans unaware that they live in a real-life wonderland. LibertyStickers.com has a huge inventory of political bumper stickers and messages that reflect the truth about our government, our politicians, and the future of America. With so many in stock, there's one perfect for you. Visit us today at LibertyStickers.com. Again, that's LibertyStickers.com. Do your part. Your voice is important. Let it be heard. Welcome back, Resurrected Republic Truth Radio broadcast on RBN. All right, so we were rolling the Assad interview, uh, Chris. Uh, do you want to hear a little bit more of that? Um, I think that that's important for people to hear. Well, absolutely. This was really a Zio communist or Bolshevik plot to take over America from within by using the so-called uh, crafts, the arts, the black arts, the mystery arts, yeah. Babel, to uh, declare people to be... Uh, insane or psychotic or neurotic or all these other so-called subjective interpretive uh, vagaries that they use in the DSM-5, which has nothing in there that can be founded on Federal Rule Evidence 702, the qualification of expert witness uh, calling for what's termed the Dahl-Bear analysis, a three-pronged test for everything to be um, declared to be admissible on the federal courts as an expert witness. And this three-pronged test calls for everything to be observable, 
measurable or repeatable, and it must meet all three prongs to be considered to be evidentiary value in the federal courts under Federal Rule Evidence 702. Uh, further, something you'll find, I think, very intriguing, I found uh, through, let's call it extraterrestrial guidance at a thrift store, a read investigative techniques manual, compendium of stories of their writings of this read, R-E-I-D, or read more accurately, read communist, out of the Chicago, uh, Illinois schools on their investigative techniques where it tells you about a case called, you'll love this one, Frazier, F-R-A-Z-I-E-R, versus Cup, sorry about the noise, C-U-P-P, and it's a Supreme Court decision. It tells us that the police, law enforcement officials, FBI, all these agencies have the ability to lie, to tell you false stories, to uh, tell you they've captured uh, your evidence of some crime thing to get you to confess and trick you into it. They can terrorize people. There are some lines that they draw to disembark from what they can do. But nevertheless, it's very, very dangerous. And you've been victimized by being framed up. I'm not sure why I didn't offer a uh, uh, entrapment defense for you because that's exactly what you were done on this uh, deal up at the uh, Malahir Wildlife Refuge when you went to Pete Santilli's room with that girl showed up. It was obviously an undercover. No, agent no, it wasn't. I have to correct you. It wasn't Pete Santilli's room. Oh, okay. It was maybe been LeBoy Finnegan's room. I, I yeah, yeah. Anyway, female showed up with the. Uh, pistol in her purse you didn't know was there went to the bathroom and of course they magically busted in and discovered her in there and tried to claim that you were in constructive possession that's what they call it when they try to well, actually she it. left it there she she left it there and she left i i to talk about this oh, i'm gonna have to be accurate yeah i'm gonna have to be accurate about it yeah yes she carried it in and she put it there that's a fact how convenient yeah <laughs> Well, you know, I only had stories of this stuff while you were locked up, and we don't get all the information, but I'm glad you're clear no, on the record. No, it's okay, because then she went on to say how I was an armed, dangerous, domestic terrorist uh, who was trying to foment revolution. So so you mean to tell me that on your one assessment, I'm so dangerous, but on your other assessment, it's okay for you to walk in and place a firearm and ammunition in a room that you rent that you tell me I can use the Internet in. I thought that that was all rather interesting, and I had taken great steps to see that, uh, well, it doesn't matter now. It's, 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 what's done is done, and, and uh, it is what it is. So, uh, But anyway, w I really want to focus on this Assad interview. Uh, we keep getting off, and this is a great conversation for, uh, I think, either tomorrow or the next day. I may be covering this psychology uh, more in depth, and also in the Resurrect the Republic .chat, Tango chat. Uh, I also left some uh, links to uh, Kenneth Goff and the uh, brainwashing sla in, you know, into slavery and uh, communist psychological warfare. That's very interesting reading um, for people to have there. I, I think that that's, uh, uh, that's advantageous. So folks can go to resurrectorepublic.com and you can scroll on down to that chat menu on the right-hand side or go to resurrectorepublic.chattango.com. And you'll find it there as well uh, for a little bit of, you know, a couple links for you to check out. Uh, but I want to get back to this Assad interview, yeah. and we'll try and break it down in, in, uh, a, a little bit further through. Go ahead, Mike, and roll Assad. There was a political will, as you put it, to remove you from power. That was the will of Washington. That seems to have changed. Have you any idea why the United States has changed its mind, apparently, about your future? No, because the problem with the American officials, they say something and they mask their intentions. They go in a different way. They say something, they say the, the opposite. They say something, they do something different. So you cannot tell what their real intentions. I'm not, uh, what I'm sure about that, they don't have good intentions toward, to, uh, towards Syria. Maybe they are making tactics, maneuvers, but they, don't, they haven't changed their intention, as I believe. President Obama wanted you out. He's leaving office soon, and you're staying. Did you win? No, it's not between me and him. It's between me and whoever wants to destroy this country, and mainly the terrorists within Syria now. This is where, where, where we can win as Syrians if we can get rid of those terrorists, if we can restore the stability in Syria. This is where we win. Otherwise, we cannot talk about winning. That's true, they didn't succeed. 
that if they don't succeed in their plans, if it went into a fiasco, doesn't mean we, we win the war. So we have to be realistic about and precise about using the terms in that regard. But one of the president's key aims, which was to remove you from power, has clearly failed. Or do you believe it's failed? Yeah, I said he's failed, but doesn't mean I win, because for him the war is to remove me. For me the war not to stay in my position. For me this, the war is to restore Syria. So yeah, you're talking about two different wars. For me, I'm not fighting my war. I'm not fighting the war that the president should stay. My war is to protect Syria. I don't care about if I stay or not as long as the Syrian don't want me. Boy, what if our war was to protect position. the United States? For me, States. I don't care about what, what the other presidents want. I care about what the Syrian wants. If they want me to stay, I'm going to stay. If they want me to leave, I'm going to leave. So it's different, completely different uh, thing. Do you feel the United States has fundamentally misunderstood your war with ISIS, with what you might call a common enemy? Again, it's not common <laughs> enemy, because for us, we are genuine in fighting not only ISIS and al-Nusra and every affiliated to al-Qaeda uh, organization within Syria. They have the same, all of them are terrorists. So if you want to talk not about ISIS, about the terrorist groups, we wanted to get rid of the terrorists, we wanted to defeat those terrorists, while the United States wanted to manage those groups in order to topple the government in Syria. So you cannot talk about common interests unless you, they really want to fight those terrorists and to defeat them. And they didn't do that. They've been in Iraq in 2006. They didn't try to defeat them. But America is very genuine about fighting ISIS. ISIS is a threat to the American homeland. How can you say America is not serious about Because ISIS, ISIS uh, has been uh, set up in Iraq in 2006 while the United States was in Iraq, not Syria was in Iraq. So it was growing under the supervision of the American authority in Iraq and they didn't do anything to, to fight ISIS at that time. So why to fight it now? And they don't fight it now. It's been expanding under the supervision of the American airplanes. And they could have seen the ISIS uh, using the oil field and exporting oil to Turkey. And they didn't try to attack any convoy of ISIS. How could they be against ISIS? They, don't, they cannot see. They don't see how the Russians could have seen it from the first day and started attacking those convoys. Actually, the Russian intervention unmasked the American uh, intentions regarding ISIS and the other terrorist groups, of course. Three years ago, President Obama made a threat against you. He drew a red line and then withdrew from that and did not attack you. Hmm. What do you feel about that? Is that the sign of a weak president? Yeah, that's the problem. In the United States, some uh, has been, uh, they've been promoting for four years now, only a uh, good president is uh, ruthless or tough that who, is go who should go to war. This is the definition. Otherwise, he's going to be a weak president, which is not true. Actually, for the American administration, since the Second World War, uh, they, are, they have a, a share in stoking the fire and conflicts in every part of this uh, world. And as the time goes by, uh, the, those administrations are becoming more and more pyromaniac. The difference now between the, those administrations is only about the mean, not about uh, the goal. Uh, one of them sent his own troops, like Bush. The other one is using uh, surrogate mercenaries. The third one using proxy and so on. But the core is the same. Nothing has changed. To go back to that moment three years ago, was that the sign of a weak United Pause States? Pause that a weak right president? there for a yeah, second, Mike. If, if, you hear what he just said. He said that, that there are different tactics that are being employed by these different presidents are all achieving the same objective, although politically and to the public they have a different appearance. But they all go to the same objective, and that is getting involved in a foreign war in a sovereign nation that is no threat to the United States. And this is where I keep getting stuck. I really want to support Trump. I know, I know that a lot of you guys believe in him. And I, you know, like I said, there's a lot of things he does that I like too. But ah, I, it's the same. It's the same goal. So if it's not Trump, then let's go higher than Trump. Who is it? The Council on Foreign Relations, Trilateral Commission, uh, same actors all the way to the Crown. I mean, they're the ones that really created this. With Lord Rothschild there and that being in the, the seed of the Middle East of, of, of planting a situation that um, really was a, an, an aggravator to the entire region. So we've seen now the PNAC thing take down, uh, look, at, you know, look at Gaddafi, and who cackled over that? Hillary Clinton cackled over that. We came, we saw he died. <laughs> the little wicked witch of the West. My God. 
You know, it, it was as, as bad as uh, when they asked Madeleine Albright. You know, 500,000 men, uh, you know, women and children have been uh, uh, killed in, in Iraq. Is, is the price worth it? Well, we think that the price is worth it. Who says things like this? These people are psychopaths. How could you just dismiss the deaths of 500,000 people as, well, we think it was worth it? I mean, you could have called it a loaded question, but good God. Anyway, all right, back to the Assad interview. Go ahead and roll it. If you want to talk about the core, which is the war attacking Syria, they've been attacking Syria through proxies. They didn't fight. I said they didn't make any pressure on Turkey or Saudi, or Saudi Arabia in order to tell them stop sending money and uh, personnel and every logistic support to that terrorist. They could have done so. They didn't. So actually, they are waging war, but in different ways. They didn't send their troops. They didn't uh, attack with missiles. But the same mercenaries. That's what I meant. I mean, uh, the same. The Did same. it surprise you that they didn't attack? No, no, it, it wasn't a surprise, but I, I think uh, what they are doing now had the same effect. So between mercenaries and between uh, missiles, it, this one could be more effective for them. So uh, no, I, I couldn't say that I was surprised. You're a leader. By drawing a red line and not following through, has that damaged America's credibility, not just in the Middle East, but in the world? But this credibility hasn't ever existed for us, at least in the early 70s, to be frank with you. Since we restored our relation with the United States in, in 1974, we never saw any administration has real credibility in every, in every issue we dealt with. They never had it. So I cannot say that it harmed. Many of their allies, they don't believe them. I think that the American credibility, not because of what you've mentioned, because of their politics in general, their mainstream politics are at uh, uh, all-time low. That's how, how we see it. An all-time low in yeah. terms of its credibility in the world? Generally, yeah, in, uh, regarding uh, the, 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 the politics in general, not, not regarding Syria. Yeah. Do you welcome the end of President Obama's term of office? It means nothing for us, because if you change your administration, but you don't you change politics, it means nothing. So it's about the, uh, the Good politics. Good point. And in Syria, we never bet. This is why I played the two interviews. Or any president going. We never bet. Because what they say in their campaign is different from what they practice after they became elected. You've talked about presidents being the same, never changing their policy. But there will be a new president in the United States next year. Yeah. Do you hope for a new relationship? Do you believe anything like that is possible? Yeah, of course, we hope always, we always hope that next president would be much wiser than the previous one, uh, less uh, uh, pyromaniac, as I said, less, uh, less uh, militaristic, adventurist uh, president. That's what we hope. But we never saw somehow. I mean, the difference is uh, very marginal. So we keep hoping, but we don't bet on that hope. So there will be a new president. There are two main choices. One of them is Donald Trump. What do you know of Mr. Trump? Nothing. Just what I heard in the media and uh, during the campaign. That's what I say. We don't have to waste our time hearing what they say in their campaign. They're going to change after they become elected. And this is where we have to start evaluating uh, the president after the campaign, not during the campaign. And you're here Pause in Damascus. Right there, what right? are you hearing? In Pause that right there. Did you hear what he said? Okay. Now, look, I kind of look back to Ron Paul. A lot of things that he said came true, right? All right. So let's, let's listen to what Assad just said here. He said... It doesn't really make any difference because no matter how they, they go about it, uh, it's going to be they're going to change what it is that they say they're going to uh, uh, fall back in line with the foreign policy that's been already established over the long course of time. Uh, this is what he said. And and what has happened? So, you know, a lot of people, you know, I get the whole 4D chess thing. Uh, I've heard about that. And uh you know, it, it was a target that didn't do any serious damage, but uh, how you could work alongside somebody who you were doing uh, deceptive attacks with like that. So, so the 4D chess things would have to mean that Trump was siding with Assad and that was just uh, something to make somebody happy. Look, I, you know, a hun over $100 million worth of missiles were shot off, but, you know, I don't know about you folks, but there's people out in the streets here that, you know, not, I'm not for socialism or anything, but I could think of a way to take 100, over $100 million, a lot better way 
to spend over a hundred million dollars in a military attack against a foreign nation that's of no threat to the United States. And I could think of a lot better way to make America great again by, hey, let's take that money, roll it in and end the Fed or let's, uh, you know, invest it into something else, into the infrastructure or which I really don't agree with anyway. Central planning I have issues with. But all I'm saying is, is you get my point. Over $100 million in missiles, in almost outdated missiles, which I think that are, you know, uh, a little bit uh, curious, dubious at best. So, I mean, um, you know, so this 4D chess thing, you know, I've bounced around back and forth. I'm just, uh, it's not resonating with me because, you know, when I look back to history and I look back to these different presidents, um, you know, I know a lot of people I know now that know Bush for what he is, and and a lot of people at the time wanted to really believe because they were conservatives that Bush was the answer. And look how that turned out. So all I'm saying is, is that you know when you get behind the cult of personality, and you you lend too much credibility to that that emotional investment because that's what it is. It's an emotional investment when you believe in or on somebody or something. Um, it is an emotional investment, and that is where the makings of your conditioning lay, right? So anytime that you have to critically analyze um, something that you've already put uh, an emotional investment in, and by the way, these people are chess players. You want to talk about 4D chess? It's very well possible, but what kind of 4D chess are we talking about here? You, you know, know, Tom, mm-hmm. It's uh, not without some speculation and good insinuation. There are some people up on the Internet on some YouTube sites that uh, show they were crisis actors that were operatives that went to the hospital to be acting like they were treated. And it's not without uh, going crisis oh, yeah. management tactics that we see that it could have been using a theatrical fogger to miss the scene to make it seem like uh, they were being gassed because they weren't sure. able to find any evidence of actual gassing. And so it may be just a big ruse to confuse, like they run PSYOPs operations here in America. They're doing the yeah. same thing yeah. as the same people with the central planners of these uh, insidious ideas. Probably the senior executive services and Serco are the ones that are really running these uh, global Oh, PSYOPs. yeah. Oh, I agree with you there uh, wholeheartedly, you know, because, you know, I, I saw that story about the young man, the, the little boy, who was gra- dragged into the hospital onto the second floor and they started dousing him with water and washing him off. The camera crew was there and they filmed the whole thing. And then, you know, his dad came in and was like, what are you doing? Dousing cold water on my kids. You can get him sick. Well, there's been a gas attack. What are you talking about? I haven't heard of a gas attack. This guy from the neighborhood. So yeah, there's, there's all kinds of these things that pop up. And this is why I say, you know, I, I don't, I don't mean to be so cynical that to say, you know, you just don't believe anything, but you know, when it comes from government, and money is going to be spent, and there's people with agendas that we've already pointed out behind things. I don't believe anything. Nothing. None of it. Well, I think the proper fail state is suspicious at least, if not found like distrustful of what the government tells you, because it's usually lying to you. Well, yeah, we proved that time and time and time and time and time again. You know, what I don't understand about this whole cult of government is that we can catch prosecutors lying, withholding evidence. We can, we can, uh, 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 tons of evidence for the agencies that do that and far worse, violating uh, the Constitution on a daily basis. And, and, and then I hear stupid things like, well, we need to, a constitutional convention to change the Second Amendment because gun control now. What difference does it make? They haven't been going by the Constitution for a long time. So, I mean, my God, I mean, if somebody doesn't figure out how to rein this thing back in, we got some problems ahead. You're right about that. We got a whole lot of troubles. Uh, remember old George Bush? He told us the truth. He says that ain't nothing but a doggone piece of paper in his view of the world. And uh, maybe it is. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. actually, we've been under UN control here since 1933 or before. And I'm not sure that we even won the War of 1812 when they left the Constitution yeah. Harbor. <laughs> Uh, with their weapons, right. they don't usually uh, losers leave with their weapons. They'll either turn around and kick their butt again or go back to fighting once they got you uh, swinging around the corner to come back and get them from behind. 
Well, they did their job. They burnt down the National Archives and the White House, and they destroyed all kinds of evidence, including, well, what they thought they destroyed completely was the original 13th Amendment and so on and so forth. Uh, and then we've had, and we're going to be getting again into the whole uh, Reconstruction period, and Professor Thomas Woods uh, illustrated how fraud was uh, committed, out and out lawlessness uh, by unseating northern senators so that they could, you know, uh, so they could meet a quorum of votes under, yeah, it was just crazy, man, what they've done. And, and it's all of these things, time and time again, uh, incident after incident has, has occurred. And there have been many people that stood up. There have been many people that tried to fight against it. But, um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't like to be, again, pessimistic by telling people out there, well, you know, I've lost hope in the Constitution. The Constitution, the belief in the Constitution is what's keeping us going. It's what's keeping us fighting. So I think that was a great idea. But, you know, I think we have to look at things in, in, a, in a proper perspective. And, you know, they're basically calling people who believe in the Constitution sovereign citizens and domestic terrorists and mentally ill and, uh, and all of these things. And I think that, you know, we need to start seeing the writing on the wall apply ourselves harder. Uh, you know, I'm doing the best I can. What are you guys doing out there? You know, what, what are you guys doing every day to, to enlighten somebody, to spread some truth? You know, you can go to resurrectorepublic.com on dirtyunclesam.com, you know, shatter some people's uh, cognitive dissonance. Now that they've seen all of this deep state activity, uh, maybe they'd be willing to take a look at the actual CFR reports going all the way back and some of the history that has led up to all of this. Um, you know, the, the, the infiltration of just about every aspect of our society, the control of about every aspect of our society. Right, so you can't even pull a tag off a pillow without breaking a federal law these days. You know, uh, the concept of, of, you know, the right to keep and bear arms. How do they get around it? Commerce Clause. Well, Congress was empowered to regulate commerce, so they just threw guns under the Commerce Clause, and that was their end down around the Second Amendment. Restriction upon them that they couldn't interfere. This is mind control, folks. And, you know, I'm going to expose a little thing about this whole uh, mental illness uh, thing that we keep hearing being pushed. And I keep hearing the NRA backing this, too, because they needed a good counter against March for Our Lies. Well, I see a ser seriously disturbing pattern within uh, some of these folks that are saying, you know, we need to do more about mental illness. Well, uh, to keep, you know, perfectly honest with you folks, if people aren't a threat to others, then there is no... Uh, right for anybody to intercede in their lives. And, and um, when people start asking you if you've had psychological analyses when they're in government custody and the only thing that you've expressed to them is your desire to support and defend the Constitution, I urge you to take a real hard, hold on a second here, folks, you know, something's wrong with that picture, you know, <laughs> take time, time to take a good hard look. <laughs> the movie Avatar was so illustrative of the mindset of the militant industrial so-called complex. And it, me, I'm kind of anal retentive about words, you know. I've become a kind of a wordologist and entomology. That's the study of word science and where it comes from. Well, when we look at the word commerce, that's with, by, through mercenary activities where the basic fundamental underlying premise of the word is when you divide it yep. into its component parts. And so really yep. the Commerce Clause, which is another War Powers Act, or by commerce, it might be by commercial means or financial means or any other means, that's asymmetrical warfare in particular, yep. uh, using amorphous, using all forms of technology, technocracy, techno-crazy people who would use all these other means and schemes to control others and demonate them and dominate them completely to get them to comply or deny. And of course, you label them as uh, savages or... Uh, the uncuffed or the belligerents or whatever else you're going to uh, do a label because they're out there peacefully yep. getting along with each other and, and worshiping the great yep. free of knowledge and so on and so forth and color them as being dangerous because they're getting along so well and they got peace and harmony and happiness out there. That's dangerous. <laughs> Resurrect the Republic, folks. Resurrectorepublic.com. Go and hit that PayPal. See you tomorrow. Photo ops.